Maseches Bovekama. We are going to have today a special share about the Esrim, the Alba Matnas the 24 Matonas, 24 gifts that Bnei Soil is supposed to give the Kohanim in different times uh, during Beis Amikdash. Some of them are even after Beis Amikdash. Some of them may be even in Chutz Lord. And we're going to go through all 24 Bezos Hashem. Uh, try to expand a little bit. This is really part of the Amud Yomi Shir given every day in the base we call it in Beit Shemesh. Toshma, we discussed Gezel Agel before in the Gemara, and we're going back to Gezel Agel in order to find a certain detail about the Matana called Gezel Agel. The Gemara is going to go through all 24 different gifts given to Kohanim, and then we'll clarify exactly what is the status of Gezel Agel. Toshma, Kufiu Domud Beis. We are a few lines before the end of the narrow lines. Toshma, Esrim ve'av matnes kehuna nitnu la'arun rabonov. There were 24 matonois, 24 different uh, items you have to give Aaron and his children or any, obviously, koyen in the world. Ve'kula nitnu be'klal u'patu klal u'bris melach, which means if you look at Parshas Koirach, which is only two weeks time, yeah, if you look at that, it says Kufiu Domud Beis, Kufiu Domud Beis. We are a few lines before the end of the narrow lines, before the wide lines. So basically, if you look at the Parsha of Korach, you see all 24 Matonas are either written outright, Mephorish, black and white, and some of them are, if you see the Mephorshim, they're like alluded to, they're hinted to in that list of Matonas. Now before, just like the term many times, is Klal Uprat Uklal, there's a general word there, and then there's a prat, and then there's another general word afterwards. So that means klalu pratu klal, and then bris melach. Afterwards, it says bris melach. The concluding words there after the klalu pratu klal are bris melach, which means the eternal covenant of melach, of salt. Just like salt is something that is always preserves everything and never goes bad, so too is our covenant with Hashem and the Koyanim who are the servants of Hashem. So now, what does it mean Klalu Patu Klal? It's interesting because there, there is no Klalu Patu Klal that gives you, makes any difference La Alocho. There's no Klal, usually Klalu Patu Klal means there's some kind of halachic uh, uh, nafkamina, halachic difference that's made because of Klalu Patu Klal. Here there isn't. Yeah, the 24 Matan Skuna aren't. So the idea is just an ag- agadic idea, just a hashkafic idea that those 24 Matanas have something hashkafically that is similar. What is it? Says the, the says the Gemara in the first wide line. Whoever fulfills them, whoever gives the twenty four matnis kuna as he's supposed to, all the trumas and maestros and korbanos and uh, gez and bchor v'chule. So it's as if it was mekayim the entire Torah which was given to klal patu klal. If you give the koyen the twenty four gifts. Then it's considered, or any gift that you uh, that you're supposed to be giving, <clears throat> then it's as if you fulfill the entire Torah, which is represented in Klalupatu Klal, because all over the Torah we have Klalupatu Klal and Ubris Melach. What's Ubris Melach? Also, the, where do you bring Melach? On the Korbanas, on the sacrifices. Now, if you bring the 24 Matonas, it's considered as if you brought the Korban. Even nowadays, you bring a Pidian Aben. I was in Pidian Aben two weeks ago. Pidian Aben is something. Which is as if he brought a korban to Hashem, Bris Melach. Kolo Oivar Alem, whoever does not fulfill the 24 Matonois, Kilo Oivar Al Kalu Patu Klal. It's as if he break, as if he broke all the different laws of Torah. It's as if he mamash not become the entire Torah, which is terrible. Bris Melach, and also it's as if he did not bring any korban that he should have brought. So now, though the Rambam also says that the Koyen who does not believe in the Torah fully, who does not believe in any of the 24, the Kohen says, I don't think I'm supposed to, it was supposed to get those matonas, you don't give them the matona. Yeah, a Kohen who's not a full believer should not get any of the matonas at all. And there's also a question about giving the, some of the matonas are holy, some of them are not holy. Some of them, the Kohen has to eat the Mekdush of the Tahara, he can't be impure when he eats them, for example, Tuma, some of them are, are not uh, the Tahara necessarily, such as, uh, I don't know, getting the money for Pidin Aben, yeah, Rosh is a Gez, so if the Koyen is not a Koyen who is a Tamid Chochem, a Koyen is a Ma'oret, it's a question whether you have to give him, whether you're allowed to or supposed to give him the Matonas or not. So, you shouldn't, but you have an ABS, 
it's not halacha shir. I'm just giving you the general ideas. Elohen, here are the 24, and the brisa that we're reading now. This is really a brisa that's a sefta in a different place, and the brisa divides them to three different categories. Elohen, esel b'mikdash. There are ten matonas who are given inside the base of mikdash to the kohani working there. Vedalat b'yerushalayim. Four matonas are given slash eaten in Yerushalayim, within the confines of the Ir, I'm very tempted to say the old city, but the the current new old city is not exactly the same as the old one, Is but the halachic city of Yerushalayim, within the halachic walls of Yerushalayim, there are four gifts that are given over there. The Esel Begvulim, there are ten gifts that are given Begvulim. What are the Gvulim? Places outside Yerushalayim, all over Eretz Israel. However, the Rambam says that five out of the last ten, the latter, five out of them can also be given in Chul, also given in Chutz Laaret, in all kinds of places. Let's go. Esel Mikdosh. there are ten matonas given in the Mikdosh. What are they? Well, first of all, you have to know all the matonas we're about to mention, all ten they were about now to list, are considered to be Kodshe Kodoshim. What does Kodshe Kodoshim mean? Holy of the Holies, which means these are Kodshe Kodshim, these are Korbonois, Menochois, that have the highest level of Kedusha, and therefore it's very simple what that means. They can only be eaten by male Kohanim, and only inside Beis Amikdash, only inside the Azor. They can't even go to the women's section, to the Ezos Noshim, only in the Ezos Kohanim, in the main courtyard where the Mizbech was, yeah, and the Kior and the Tabois, that place is where the male Kohanim who work in that Mishmar, in that shift, only they can eat those 10 gifts. What are they? What are the Kochi Kochim? As I told you before, there are only three Korbonos, Korbonos from, from animals that are considered Kochi Kodoshim. Oilo, Chatos, and Oshom. Now, Oilo, as Peret said last week, nobody gets the Oilo because Hashem gets to eat the, so to speak, so to speak, HaKadosh Baruch it goes like Gavoya, he goes up to Shamaim, the, the flesh, the flesh of the oil. So that's not mentioned, it doesn't go to the Kohanim. What about the skin? What about the hide of the oil? That will be mentioned later, not now. Etzab Amikdu, Chatas Behema. Chatas Behema, if a person broke any Isser, the Oraisa, the Shoigeg, and that Isser, the Oraisa, had it been Bemezid, what would have been the story? He would have been Chayev Chores, let's say eating chometz, as you gave an example, parents. A person ate chometz b'mezid, lo leinu chayev chores. If he did it b'shoigeg, he's chayev chatos, yeah, he didn't know it was chometz, he didn't know it was Pesach today, he was on a trip to Alaska, he didn't know it was Pesach exactly. So then what? He has to bring a chatos. There are other chatois, as you see in the chart that I emailed you. There's also chatos brought by uh, chatos beima brought by uh, Nozir, by Mitzoyro. Yeah, the Achator is also sometimes brought not because of a sin. Usually Chatas Beima is brought for uh, an, an Avera of would have been chorus. Which Beima? Chatas Beima, usually a person who's a Yochid, Chatas Yochid is brought from female, female sheep or goat. The Chatas Oif, Chatas Oif, a person who cannot afford in certain Chatois, in certain cases, only three cases, Certain Averus, if you cannot afford the big chatos of a behema, you financially just can't afford it. Instead of that, you bring chatos off, you bring a turtle dove, and you bring two, usually you bring chatos and oilo together of, of the birds, chatos oif and, and the oilo oif. Chatos oif is a bird, and that bird, only the, the blood goes on the mizbeach, and the entire flesh is eating by the koyhanim. As opposed to Chattas Behema, where obviously the main part that go, goes on the Mizbech, besides the blood, is the Imurim, the intestines, the Kishkas. But Chattas Oif, there are no Kishkas. The Kishkas, they throw them away, because the Oif eats from other people's fields. He's a, he's a Ganev, he's a thief, the Oif. So Hashem doesn't like his gut to be in the Mizbech, and the Kohanim, there you just clean it, you clear it out, you stick the thing there, boom, out, you take it, you throw it to that hole near the Mizbech, and the flesh goes to the Kohanim. The Oshom, so after Chattas, we have Oshom. There are two types of Oshomos. Oshom Vadai. Oshom Vadai is an Oshom that's brought up because of, as atonement for five different Averos. One of them is the one we've been discussing with Vakama for a very long time. The person who stole, and then, or he held someone else's money illegally for whichever reason. Let's say he held back his salary, and he's an employer, let's say, right? 
and he lied about it, and he says, no, I don't owe you, I don't have it, nothing to do with me. And then after he lied, he swore she was Sheker, and then he admitted that he did wrong by himself. Besides bringing an extra Choymesh, an extra fifth, which is really an extra quarter, we said, he also has to bring an Oshom Vadai, an Oshom, an Oshom is always male ram, either male ram or male lamb, one of the two. It's never female, it's a very, very, uh, very specific uh, kind of korban, the Oshom. So it's Oshom Gzelos, Oshom Meilos, which we're going to learn about later, is the person who embezzled money from Beis Amikdash. By mistake, he used uh, something from Beis Amikdash. Oshom, and yeah, Oshom Shifcha Chorufa, somebody had relations with a Shifcha, which is half free, and she's half a slave. She had two masters. One of them freed her, one of them didn't. So she's half a slave, half, uh, half a free woman. And the only person she can marry is an Eved Ivri. And she was betrothed to an Eved Ivri, and someone else had relations with her. So it's not as bad as a regular woman, but he has to bring an Oshom Vadai. He has to bring the Oshom for that, one second. And you also have an Oshom Mitzoyro. A Mitzoyro at the end of his Tzara says to bring an Oshom, one of three Korbanos is Oshom. And the Oshom of uh, Nazir, yeah, an Oshom of Nazir also in case the Nazir uh, messed up. He has to bring an Oshom uh, Vadai also. Now, an Oshom Vadai is, yes, yeah, so these are the five Oshom Vadais. By the way, the three uh, sins, you have to bring a ram, a big one. The Oshom Nazir, an Oshom Mitzoyro, at the end of a process, it's not a sin. He's finishing his Naziris or finishing his Tsaras, and then he has to bring a smaller one, not a whole ram, a lamb, which is up to a year old. One second, please. The Oshom, but they're all considered as one. Oshom Vada is all one. The Oshom Tolui, what's Oshom Tolui? As we said before, Oshom Tolui is the person who is not sure whether those two pieces that he had in front of him, one piece was Chelev, very Treif Lemehadrin, the other one was the Dats, the Dats, the Charedis, uh, the Mehadrin tray for kosher, and he didn't know which one he ate. He ate one of them, he's not sure which one. So then he doesn't know whether Bechlal is Chayv Chatos. Yeah, he's less than the guy before who knows that he ate Chelev Beshoi. He realized he was Chelev. This one, he realized, he realized it was a maybe. Realized it was a maybe, he has to bring an Oshom Tolui, a pending Oshom, in order to atone temporarily for what he did. He needs Oshom Tolui. And that is, these are the these are four out of the five korbanos we're going to talk about, but there's a question coming, so let's pause and hear the question. So then the fifth one is, you okay? Oh. No, no, you asked me a question about, okay. We're going to get together again. Okay. I, if I have time, I'll look into it. The Ziv Chishal Mitzibur. Ziv Chishal Mitzibur, as we said before, is an interesting korban. It's a korban in disguise. Because what's really Shal Mitzibur? These are the korbanos that are brought on Shvuos. Yeah? There are two kvosim, two sheep, male sheep, that are brought on Shvuos together with the Shte Alechem, which we're going to discuss later. Shvuos is all about duality. You know, Shnei Luchot the Mazel is twins. This, this month. Yeah? So you have Shte Alechem and two lambs or two sheep that are brought there also, you shech the lambs and that makes the, the what's the names, the breads, which were very unique, also halachically edible for the kohanim. Why do I say that it's always strange? Because usually shlomim is the korban that re represents the second group of korbanos, which are lighter kochim, kochim kalim. Here, this is kochim kochim. Who eats those two lambs on shvuas? which are brought besides all the other korbanos of Shavuos. Shavuos, by the way, is the Yom Tov with the most, with the highest number of korbanos Tibur, more than any other Yom Tov. I can take the challenge, and I don't have time now to explain the numbers, but there are many of them there, brought together in one day, of Tibur, don't tell me Pesach, of communal korbanos. So now, two of them are those two uh, uh, sheep that the Kohanim would eat, like every other normal kochi kochim, and yet they're called Shalmi Tibur. They're called Shalmei Tzibu, yeah, although really they're Kochi Kochi, but they're Kochi Kochi. So now we already have five, right? You help me count. The next one, the Loig Shemen Shel Mitzoyro, Log Shemen Shel Mitzoyro, Mazel Tov, after a very, Log Shemen Shel, first of all, let's translate, Log, yeah, Log is a Mida, Log is a Revis times four. Imagine yourself your Kiddush cup times four, okay? More or less, yeah, that's Log. What we drink, Revis, Revis, everyone knows what Revis is a quarter of a Log. So imagine yourself a large-ish, but not huge, kind of flask, a flask, 
and in that flask you have what? Oil. Who brings the oil? The Metzairah. The Metzairah finished, he is finishing now, he's very long and arduous process of Tahara. And besides bringing three korbanas, a Gansa Maise, he also has to bring a log of oil, of olive oil, to the base of Mikdash. The Koyan takes it in from the flask, the Koyan pours it onto the left hand of another Koyan. The other Koyan does all kinds of things with it. First of all, he sprinkles seven times from far away by the door, by the Nikonor door, the entrance over there. He sprinkles seven times against towards the Kodesh Kodoshim, very far, but towards there in that direction. Like we can dive in towards Yerushalayim, even if we're in Philadelphia. Okay. And what? Afterwards, he places it on the ear. I shouldn't show it myself. On the ear of the Metzorah and the thumb of the Metzorah and the big toe of the Metzorah. Yeah. But that's after the blood was sprinkled. But we're not talking about the blood. The, the blood was already in those places of the Corban. And then the rest of what's on his hand, one, two, three, he puts it on the head of the Metzorah. He gets an oil shower. And that's it. Now he's good to go. What happens with all the rest, the remainder of the oil that remained in the flask? Who gets that? Who eats that? Who's going to have his pita and, you know, and hummus with that oil? The kohanim. That log shaman is also called the korban in the Torah, in a certain sense. And therefore, that too is kocha kochim. And it goes to the male kohanim who work in that mishmeres, in that mishmar, or beis av, mishmar, the whole mishmar, they get to eat, not to eat by itself. The Gemara and Brocha says it's unhealthy to drink oil by itself. Never heard of a diet that says to drink oil. But they can have the oil together with other foods, and that oil is holy oil. That's the next one. Umoisa, where are we, number six? You count. I don't know how to count. Umoisa, Oimel. Seven. Okay. We're about to start seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven it is. Yes, questions coming. One. Before we continue, I'll do a little bit of show and tell because people are not so clear over here. Let's say this is let's say this is not where this is oil. So let's say this is That's the hand alcohol. of one coin, yeah, regular or regular. No, this is holy oil. Now the oil I pour from one coin then into another coin, then this hand belongs to another coin. This is Kahana, this is the Kaplan. So this is the hand of Kaplan Koyen, and now he got into his left hand the oil. And from his left hand, he does everything that has to be done seven times, the ear, the thumb, the thumb, and then the hule on his head. Now, still there's oil left in the flask that was held by the original first coin, all that left over, that's what goes to the koyanim. Vital. Yeah, that's a lot of oil. Why not? Let them enjoy themselves. No. no. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you know how much you need. You need seven drops, another three drops, and the rest. Vital. Where are we holding? Number seven. Umoisar ha oimer. Umoisar ha oimer. Everybody knows about counting the oimer or omer. And what is really the oimer? We all know it's a korban. It's a mincha, to be exact. Up until now, we discussed korbonois, the five things that are brought as a korban from animals. Sorry. Now we're discussing the mincha. What's a mincha? A mincha is what you call in English meal offering, something brought from the wheat, the barley, etc. Moisar Oimer, as we all know, came on the second day of Pesach, and it came from barley, and then would sift it and sift it 13 times until only the best of the best would come. Bechulay, eventually, there would be a koimet. Like in most menachas, they would do koimet, which is basically taking like a fistful of the actual offering, offer it on the mizbeach, like this, and very nice, offer and put it on the mizbeach, and the rest would be eaten by who exactly? By who? Government? No, by the koyhanim. So the Oimer would be a very unique mincha because it was a mincha tzibur. It was a mincha of obviously the entire nation together, right? It represented the whole nation, like a korban uh, musaf, let's say. It was a communal thing. And yet there were shiraim. Most korban mincha tzibur didn't have shiraim. This one was communal and had shiraim. We'll discuss later the other ones. And those shiraim were eaten by who? By the koyhanim. When on the holiday of Passover, by the second day of Pesach, the first day of Solomon. Next, number eight, Veshtei HaLechem. Veshtei HaLechem was brought on Shavuos. Veshtei HaLechem, yeah, 49 days later, one more, 49 days, whatever, on Shavuos, you bring Veshtei HaLechem. These are two big square loaves of what? Of Chometz. Oy, oy, oy. You never bring Chometz to the base of Mikdash except for two cases. One of them is Veshtei HaLechem. Veshtei HaLechem, the big two breads. What are those breads? They correspond to the two Kvosei Shlomim we spoke about before. Once you shecht the kvotim of the shlomim, 
then those two loaves are considered as sanctified and you're not allowed to take them here and there, eat them, they're nifsal betom elan. And now the Koyanim eat the entire thing. And it's chometz. Why do you bring chometz on Shavuos? Because chometz represents gaive. Are you allowed to be about gaive? No, but you should be proud that you have the Torah. Only once we arrived in Arsina, we received the Torah, then we're allowed to demonstrate Torah dika, being proud of getting the, receiving the Torah, that shtei halechem. And who eats it? The Koyanim. Where do they eat it? Inside the Azoro. So that's basically another example of Kodshi Kodoshi. Next, please, Velechem Aponim. Lechem Aponim, everybody knows what Lechem Aponim is, right? Lechem Aponim, Shabbos morning, after the Tomit Vechule, the Lechem Aponim is brought, is, is brought into, the, into the Shulchan. You have six and six, and then you bring the two spoonfuls, the Bzichim of the Levoina. Levoina, I don't know you call it in English. It's one of the good smelling things. You bring that, what? Frankincense, right, very good. Frankenstein, frankincense. And what? And sorry. And you bring the you bring the, the levoin on the Mizbeach, then the Kohanim eat it. Which Kohanim would eat it? The Kohanim of which Mishmal? Two. Because Shabbos was a uh, no, how do you call it? Uh, overlap. Changing of changing of the gods. There'll be an overlap, overlap, because the Kohanim would belong to last week, and the Kohanim was supposed to work next week. The Quranim would work next week. They arrive on, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. I think Wednesday. They arrive already at work early before Shabbos. So on Shabbos, you'd have last week's people and next week's people working together. And basically, Lechem Aponim, according to the main opinion, and it's a Mechloikis, but the mainstream opinion at the end of Sukkah says that they would share it six and six. You know, 12 divided to two is, I think it's six, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, more or less. <laughs> and now six here and six over there, there were, you know, there were two stacks right, of bread on the, mizbe, on the shulchan, six and six, six, some say five and seven, long shanay now, six for them, six for the others, and they would eat each other this morning, and they would be very holy, and they would be called lechem upon him. Before you ask, I'll listen to your question in a second. The lechem upon him, did the lechem upon him stay hot the entire week? Bechleikis, there is a big difference always between the Gemara and what's always written in the pamphlets and the newspapers, that's, uh, the more I learn, the more I realize how, you know, Jewish style is a bit different to the Torah, it's a machloikis. I'm not trying to be nitpicking. There is an opinion at the end of Manochas that says that it's chamak ve'lifoy. It stayed as hot as it was because it was baked uh, last week, basically. But uh, the other opinion says it stayed fresh with no preservatives. Woo-hoo. But fresh, but not as hot. It's a machloikis. I'm still telling you, you know, something to know. Although the common opinion is hot. I don't know if that's the uh, Maisa. Do you mind if I just read one more, one more to get to the tenth one? Of the first group, the Shorim Enochos. Last but not least, the Shorim Enochos. What does that mean? Forget now about the Tzibur. Let's say you have a Mincha. Yochid, when would the person bring a Mincha? When would the person bring a meal offering, a Mincha to Hashem? If you can't afford, let's say you have a Chatas, which is oil of a Yoyred. A Chatas, which is a sliding scale. For example, a person who lied, you spoke about Shavuah Shav, the Yaakov. Let's say the Shavuah Eidus. A person said, I ain't seen nothing. You're telling me, mister, didn't you see that my that so and so car bashed into my car and ruined it. And he swears the Shekel that he didn't see anything because he's scared to give testimony. So that's another of error. On that, he has to bring Chatas oil of Yoyred. Also, I remembered, by the way, what I forgot, forgot last week, it's Shvuas Eidus, or somebody who entered Beis Amikdash when he was Tome and he didn't know. He didn't know that he touched the dead mouse yesterday. He didn't realize, and he entered Beis Amikdash forgetting about it. Yeah. Or he ate kochim. He's a kohen, let's say, or he's throwing eating shlomim. He ate kochim while being tome, right? And the third one is the person who's nishba shvuas uh, did not fulfill the shvua. He's, we made the shvua. <laughs> tomorrow I'm starting Atkins diet. That I'm nishba. That tomorrow I'm not eating one gram of carbohydrates. It was nishba, and he broke up yetsora, took over, and he had a nice slice of pizza. After it was nishba not to have pizza. So then what does he have to do? So Shalif, it's the Shoigig, Mezid, looks him about it, but Lamaisa, in certain cases, he has to bring a Corbin, Oile Vayoyred, sliding scale kind of Corbin. So let's say the guy is really poor, he spent all his money on the pizza and on the diet. So now he doesn't have money, not even for the bird. Dali Dalus, it's called. He's so poor, he can only bring the Menochois, the meal offering. He brings the meal offering. What do you do with the meal offering? What do you do? A Kmitza, you take a handful like this onto the Mizbeach, and the rest is eaten to who exactly? To the male, Kohanim, inside the Esamikdash, inside the Azorah. Um, a mincha of a Kohen is burnt completely. A mincha of Israel 
only the bit is brought into the Mizbech and everything else is eaten to the Kohanim, eaten by the Kohanim. And also Soita, for example, we only saw right two weeks ago, Soita, Soita has to bring Mincha from Soirim. And there are other cases you bring a Mincha, the Chule, the Chule. So these are the 10 first ones that are all Kochi Kochim, all eaten inside the Azara, only male, only Kohanim. And I wish the other Matanas were as simple as this one. I don't want to scare you off, but uh, other ones are always questionable. Men, women, the Chule. Good. Very nice. Now, let's go into the second list, the Arba Yerushalayim. There are four matonas given in Yerushalayim or eaten in Yerushalayim. Number one, Habuchoyro. Habuchoyro means if a person has a firstborn, uh, whatever, cow, sheep, goat, any kosher animal, uh, behemoth, that was born first, it's the firstborn, and if it has no moon, it's automatically Kodesh, automatically it's Kodesh. You have to say that it's Kodesh, but it's just a symbolic thing. It's already Kodesh Mibeten, Mirechem, and that Bukhor is given where? Is brought to the Mizbeach. And what does the Mizbeach get? Only the Imurim, only the Imurim, only the Kishkalach. And what does the Koyan get? The entire thing. The Koyanim of the Mishmar, they get to eat the entire uh, uh, meat, all the flesh, all the meat of the Korban. Where? Where do they get to eat that? All over Yerushalayim. Wherever they are in the holy part of Yerushalayim, within the walls, they get to eat that, and so do their wives. The wives of the Koyanim also eat the B'chol together with the Koyanim, and also their Eved also gets to eat it. Uh, he gets to eat it together with them. That's the B'choyro. That's Kochim Kalim. Welcome to the second group. Thank you for the reminding me. These are typical Kochim Kalim. Eaten all over Yerushalayim, and in this case, to Koyanim and the wives as well. The Bikurim. Oh, who doesn't know about Bikurim? Shiva Saminim. A person has fruit from Shiva Saminim, a fig, a grape, and Eretz soil. The grew, and this is the first one. He brings it to the coin. Although the actual ceremony, so to speak, of the Kurim, of the coin lifting it and all that, is done inside Beis Amikdash, but the fruit are not eaten in Beis Amikdash. It can be eaten anywhere inside Yerushalayim by the Kohanim only. So that's the second gift in Yerushalayim, the Abikurim, and probably to the wives and slaves as well. I'm almost sure to remember right now, but should be also the women. The Amuram, by the way, if you notice, there is a Korban, which I'm stopping in the middle on purpose, there's a Korban that's missing here called Korban Maisel. Maisel Behema, every tenth Behema goes to the Mizbeach, right? And I would say, Maisel is Gochim Kalim. And it's not mentioned here as any one of the 24 Matas Kihuna, and it's a Maisel. You know why? Because it's not a Matas Kihuna. You know why? Because the only one who eats it is the soil. Unbelievable. The entire animal called Maisel Behema, the tenth animal, you go to the Mizbeach and the coin brings it up, the blood and the Imurim go to the Mizbeach. But the Gansa Behema, the whole flesh, all the meat is eaten by who? By Israelim only. Maybe he can give it to a coin if he wants to be his friend. But Lamaisi does not belong to the Kohanim. It's not even Matono. Common mistake, I think, with some people. Maisa Behema is not a Matnes Kehuna. It's a Korban that ends up with the Israel and his family eating it in Yerushalayim. Ir HaKodesh Bemer Bemen Omen. Let's continue into the Kochim Kalim. The Hamuram Minatoid of El Nozir. These two are together. Toid of El Nozir. What's Mura min a Toid of El Nozir? That's typical Kochim Kalim. Now we got to something typical. Most Kochim Kalim, which are Shlomim, Toido and El Nozir, the story there is the Imurim goes to the Mizbeach, obviously. Parts of it called Muram, certain parts of the Korban go to the Koyanim. Yeah, we'll eat it in Yerushalayim with the wives and Avodim and family. And the rest of the flesh goes to the Israel. For example, toido. What's a moment of toido? A korban toido is what do you bring from a korban toido? The chaze and shok. The chaze, the chest, and the right uh, shok, the forearm, the right forearm of the behema and the chest. They pick it up in the mizbech. They do tnufa, a whole story. Who ends up eating it? The koyan and his family, and the rest of it, the Israelim eat the flesh. Now, by toido, it's chaze the shok, and as you all know. What do you bring with toido that's not brought with any other korban? 40 what? 40 breads. 40 leaves of bread. So you bring 40 chomets and minchas, uh, marcheshes and uh, revucha. Yeah, four different types times 10. How much is 40 minus four? That's 36. So 36. Thank you, thank you. 30. Some people are geniuses. What can you do? It's just a gift from Hashem. So 36. 
30 sticks are eaten by the soil and his family and his friends, and four, one of each type, goes to the Kohen, with Kohen, who eats it with his family in Yerushalayim, okay? Now, what's El Nozir? A Nozir that finishes Nazir's process, and we spoke before, he brings also oil, the Nazir also brings the Ail Shlomim of the Nazir, the Zroa, also the forearm of the, of the, of the Nazir, the foreleg maybe, of the Behema, of the Nazir, also goes to the Koyen. Now, Rashi and others point out that Shlomim are not mentioned. So Rashi says, Toid and El Nazir are like Shlomim. They are like basically Shlomim are just Toida without the bread. And also, what's the difference between Toida and Shlomim? Shlomim can be eaten for two days and Toida only one day. You know why Toida, there's so much food, more than any other carbon, 40 bread. And the time is limited for only one day and half a night. Why? Very good. You should really, you can't eat it all by yourself, not even your family. So you're going to invite a lot of friends. Why do we want you to invite a lot of friends to your korban? Because you bring the korban toido. Toido is the real original version of birkas agomel. Birkas agomel should be made in front of, not in front of, amongst 10 people. The Ramam says, oimet beina soro. That's why women don't make a gun in most cases, because can't stand between 10 men. So Mimela, yeah, the men supposed to make a whole public issue, a whole, to advertise and publicize the fact that he had the names happening, that he flew in an airplane and in Arab Emirates as well. Vital. The oil is coaching. Oh, pala. Oh, big business now. Oil is coaching. Look at that. The fourth and last one of the second group is called oil is coaching. Oros Kochim, what are Oros Kochim? The hides, the skins of the animals, which animals? Of the Kochim Kodoshim, the Oros of the Oilo, and also Chatas, and also Osham were given to the Kohanim. You tell me, why is that mentioned together uh, with a group of those that are in Yerushalayim? Is that so? They're not Kochim Kalim. He was downgraded to Kochim, to Kochim Kalim, but the Rishon Mesk even more. Lechor, that's the worst place. It's, Rashi is alluding to the question, the Radbaz, the parish on the Rambam is going crazy with that. The question is like this. What are Oros Kochim? Kufiu Domud Beis. Kufiu Domud Beis. We are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines or so from the eighth wide line. Oros Kochim. Oros Kochim, first of all, where are they brought? Where do they start their career? Inside the Azaro. Because that's when you flay the skin of the carbon in the Azaro. Where are they used? Where do the Kohanim get to use them? You know where? If the Kohan goes to Khul, he can be used in Australia. That's his leather jacket. That's his leather uh, couch, leather whatever. So why the leather frock, leather hat? Why is it mentioned to be in Yerushalayim? So Rashi explains as follows, and Rashba uh, elaborates more. It's true that the Oros Kochim don't have to stay in Yerushalayim, according to them. Oros Kochim, afterwards the Kohanim can take it wherever they want. Make a leather um, belt with it and, and use it. Elamai, who gets who gets the Eres Kochim? Who gets the Eres Kochim? Only Kohanim who happen to stay where in Yerushalayim. Only a Kohen who's currently at work in Beis Hamikdash and gets to eat the flesh of the Korbanos. The Eres are always usually together with the flesh. You get to eat the flesh. You also get to eat the ore. Where is the place, where, where is the furthest place where one can eat korbonus in Australia? No, that's not Mapitom, that's in Shiloh. Where can you eat korbonus? In Yerushalayim, between the walls, within the walls. Since korbonus are eaten within the walls of Yerushalayim, that's the place where oris are given. Because the or always has to do with the eating of the korban, and eating of the korban is in the confines of Yerushalayim, Mainly the ores are called to be given inside Yerushalayim, although they're used outside. So the group of four are either things that are eaten in Yerushalayim or things given in Yerushalayim. As opposed to, we'll see later on, uh, Truma, Vidyana Ben, Gez, nothing to do with Yerushalayim at all. Some of them can be given also in uh, Ohio. Yeah, LMI, this is given. However, having said that, I saw a red buzz and I almost fainted on the floor. And the Radbaz says that although they can be used outside Yerushalayim, the Oros, they actually wouldn't do that. The Kohanim, out of respect to the Oros, would actually sell the Oros to people in Yerushalayim. And those people would give, obviously pay them. And with that money, they can do whatever they want outside Yerushalayim.
But Dr. Advaz himself, that's not like it's mandatory, but he said that was kilo, the done thing, and maybe that's why it's mentioned here, together with the Yerushalayim kind of matonos. There's also another tomorrow in different places, I don't remember where, I think Suka, Irvin, I'm not sure, where it says that the, the, the people, they'll be like your, uh, not hostess gift, a, a guest gift. How do you say it in nice English? You know, you give a gift to the, to the host, yeah? So the, the gift to the host would be the ladder of the Korban. The height of the Korban, even as a Israel. Who gets, to, who gets the, the heights of Shlomim? Who gets the heights of, uh, of Toida? The owner, the regular Israel, regular nice guy Israel. So he would, get, would be customary to give those auras to the hotel owners or your host in your shrine. So if they would have a lot of leather. Yeah, I don't know if they found in the old city at the whole uh, leather uh, business over there, but there was a lot of leathers around. Yeah, because that would be customarily staying in your shrine even if it wasn't Mamish mandatory. Yes, to them being very nice and generous with the questions, you've noticed, right? Okay, good. So you can ask another question. I'll just say again, before we go into the next group, answering people's questions, Oyrus Kodshim are Oyrus of the highest carbonus. Oilo, Oshom, Chatos, however, the or itself, the skin, which became hide, is actually Hulin. Me'ikaradin, the current can take it wherever it wants, and that seems to be the sheet of Rashi and Rashi of Hulin. The or automatically is hulin. It's you can use it for a leather jacket for even for your boots. I think, as far as I know, maybe there's a more thing. It's pashnished. However, the Radbaz says the done thing was to leave it in your shalim. That's so appropriate. They would leave it in your shalim and give it to the people over there and sell it. Next group, Basara Bigvulin. There are ten matonas that are given in the gvulin. What are gvulin? Says Rashi El Tisroil. It sounds from Rashi as the next gift, the ten gifts that are, we're about to read about are in Eretz Yisrael and not outside the Eretz Yisrael. However, the Raman says that five out of those matonas also apply in Chutz Laaretz, and some of them is the Mechlekes still today. Let's see. Truma. Well, Truma, everybody knows, only applies to Eretz Yisrael, and Truma is one out of how much. Let's say you have, give me a good example for fruit that you take Truma from. Grapes is a very good example. I like it very much. You know why? Because, because it's the Raisa. Because midoraisa lekula alma dog on torosh veitza, which is grapes and wheat and uh, and uh, olives, everyone agrees is doraisa. The other shiva saminim is a machloikes. The other fruit, maybe some opinion, most all it's drabonon and vegetables is for sure drabonon. So let's say you have grapes. How many grapes you give out of one grape out of four to fifty or sixty depends. Yeah, but you give it to the coin. It's nice and simple. Only the coin can eat it. His family can also eat it. His wife and children, where can they eat it? All over Eretz Israel. Does Truma apply in Chutzlaret? You have to take Truma in Chutzlaret? Absolutely no, not even with the Rabbonon. As you all know, you never took Meister when you lived in uh, wherever in South Dakota. Yeah, Truma. You ever lived in South Dakota? No, so you didn't take Truma. So now that's Truma. If that's given to Kohen and family, the Thomas Meister, Thomas Meister, who gives Thomas Meister? Who? The Levi. Very nice. The Levi from his tent, what he got, Meister Ishon. A tenth of his tenth he gives to the Koyan. Same thing applies to the Koyan and the Hule. Now, Truma, by the way, is more Homer Truma Smeiser. Truma, a Israel who eats Truma, it gets Misa Bidei Shemaim. Now, that's Truma Smeiser. The Chala, 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 Chala. Chala, we all know, you take from uh, whatever this amount of dough, you take Chala, and the Chala goes to the Koyan. And where does Chala apply? In Eretz Israel only, or also in Chutz Lawrence? Give me a guess. Yeah, Chala. All over the place? Well, the answer is no, not all over the place. I'm sorry, I'm being very nasty today. It's true, there was very magnificent, huge Afrosh's Chala in London, Johannesburg, and a very big one in South Africa. I saw a clip, very impressive, and you can do Chala wherever you want. However, that's a rabbinical decree. That's Midorabonon. Midoraisa Chala is only in Eretz Yisrael. The Chutzlar, it's Chala is Dorabonon. Midoraisa, Chala, only applies in Eretz Yisrael. Chala, why only Chala? Why is Chala the only Matnas Keuna? that they applied in chutzarts also, because it's very easy. Chala, where do you take chala? In the kitchen, at home. So then it's very easy to confuse between your home in Krakow or Marrakesh, your home in Yerushalayim. So they made the Xera, I'm not inventing it. It's uh, showing him state, if not before. So the chala should be taken anywhere in the world with the Rabbanon. However, things to do with the ground, ground itself, Humas, Maisos, Bikurim, there's no Xera in chutzarts, because you can tell very clearly that's mitzvah, Lueb, Oretz, and my field in Eretz Yisrael is not my field, the actual ground in uh, Hungary. 
And therefore, Chala, there was exam the Rabbana to take Chala all over the world, but it's Medoraisa only now to solve. Reish is ha, again. That is also, Chala Bismana Zeh is, I think, a question. Peretz is actually also mentioning a very important point. Some of the Matnas Kiyuna apply, don't apply after Beis Amikdash, post Beis Amikdash, which is unfortunately today, is the question whether some of the Matanas apply, some don't. I'm not sure about Chalab Zmanaz. Chalab Zmanaz, are you sure it's the Rabbana? I'm not. No. That's you true about Yoivil. That's I about, I'm not 100% sure you're right, world. but maybe. Yo, not same. Not Shmita. No, no, no. With all the respect. No, no, no. no. Now, no. Now, you put your foot into it. I'm sorry. No, no. Yoivil, Midorais, I'm stopping the shear and I'm answering a question of a very dear man over here. Yoivil, which is not in Matasuna, but Yoivil, does not, we see, we don't celebrate Yoivel, not even trying to find out when Yoivel is, because Yoivel only applies with when most of the Jewish nation are living in Eretz but some said they have to know each one where his original place was, and that's what he However, Shmita, no. Shmita, according to many opinions, some say Doraisa, some say Doraisa, some say Doraisa. Some say Doraisa. Yoivel is in Shmita, in their respect, are different. I'm not sure if what you're saying is true about Chala, I have to check it out. I don't remember, to be honest. I don't want to say Shtuyot, definitely not in video. So, Chala is Midrabonim as man as there. I'm in Eretz Israel. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I have to check it. Chala is different to other Matas Kuna because Chala is taken in the kitchen, in the house. You don't see that it's connected to the ground. When the Bala Sabai, so the woman takes Chala, all she sees in front of rice is flour, dough, and maybe also eggs and sugar and raisins. She doesn't see the field. You don't connect it mentally to the field. So you said it's a mitzvah, but it's nothing to do with anything. If, in all, if during history, people wouldn't have been taking challah, they'd come to us as well, not taking challah. And I'll tell you something very sad that I know, uh, I know uh, from my own, whatever, from people I spoke to. People, Chazanish came to Eretz Yisrael, with Mechadish, the Matnas, Mitzvah, Louis Boats, people had no idea. Yedir Shammai people who came, Hasidish and Litvish, who came very from, from Europe, they had no idea about Maisras. They would go to the field, eat, they had no idea what, but they knew about Maisras, like you know about Kochim, it wasn't part of their everyday life. They didn't know what to do, how to do. So that would have been the story with Chala also. <laughs> you see Tak uh, that, yeah, in Chutzlar, it's, yeah, that they had no idea about Matanas, uh, uh, Mitzvah Slos Bawit. So at least Chala was saved from that, because Chala is to do in the house. The field, Chachomim relied on people to realize that my field over there is not my field over here. The Mela, the things that are done in the field, like Maisos, Thomas Maisos, there was no Xera. Next one, Reishis Agez. Reishis Agez is if you have five sheep, you have five sheep and Baruch Hashem, the laden with wool. So you give a certain amount to the Mishkal Chamisha Sloim, I think. You give a certain amount, the first uh, shearing of the sheep, you give the Koyen, Reishis Agez. And that applies only, that applies one second. Tuma Thomas Maisel Chala. Um, Reshi Sagez, yeah, Reshi according to Rambam, only in Eretz soil, only in Eretz soil, only in Eretz soil. Also, Reshi Sagez is only in Eretz soil. It's the first uh, cutting of the wool goes to the koyen and may also go to a woman koyen, a bas koyen. A woman is a koyen, according to some, also gets Reshi Sagez in her own right. And it says there was an Amoira who was married to a kohenis, a woman who was from a Kohen family, and he got Reshi Sagez in her rights. Yeah, I think it says about Reishis Agez, or maybe about Matonus, maybe about both, possibly. Next one, the Matonus. Oh, Matonus. What's Matonus? We're just being Matonus all the time. A Matonus, the gifts are the Zroa, the Chayim, the Keva. We're going to see it in Parshish Pinchas. Zroa. Every person who shechts a regular chulin animal, a secular animal, so to speak, a Matonus. Where did the Matonus go? Matonus, first of all, what are they? The Zroa, the first uh, for, uh, forearm of the animal. Yeah, the, the, the front one, lechayim is the tongues and the tongue and the cheek, tongue and cheek. Yeah, the cheeks and the tongue inside of them should go to the koyen. And the cave of the stomach, it has nothing to do with probonus. It's a common mistake, it's not a korban. The rolechayim keva are brought only from chulin. Yeah, the person who shechts them is supposed to give the rolechayim keva to the koyen. Today, they don't give the tongue to the koyen, as far as I know, because no koyen can claim that it is. Because, you know, we can always say maybe another coin will take it. It's not so simple why we eat tongue nowadays. 
but it's due to the fact that no coin claims it. But Lemaisa, it's a big mitzvah, yes, to give the Zolcha and Vekeva, big machloikas. The Rambam says this applies in Chutzlarts also, and other Ishonim say it only, it's only in Tzatzol or Ashen Tosis. Shulchanor brings machloikas. Shulchanor says it does not apply in Chutzlarts. So your friendly butcher in uh, wherever in uh, Wisconsin does not have to give the Zorlocha and Vekeva. However, of course, some soifer afterwards says it's a good thing to give it in Chotar, it's an associate that Orchel Shulchan, Orchel Shulchan bemoans the fact that he's a levy. He says because he's a levy, he cannot give Zorlocha and Vekeva. Although he lived in Europe, he would have liked to do it also in Europe, but being a coin, he cannot do it. He says, had it been in Israel, he would have done that too, and give the Zorlocha and Vekeva the three uh, meaty parts. Yeah, you give it to the Koyan. Why did the Koyanim get it? It says because of Pinchas. Pinchas was a courageous Koyan. Zorlocha we don't have time now, has to do with the courageous act of, of, uh, of Pinchas. He davened, he hit them by the stomach or near the stomach with his arm. Zorlocha Abikeva was his courageous act of killing Zimri and uh, Cosby. Upidian ha ben, everyone knows Upidian ha ben. Upidian ha ben applies in Chutzart also. You give the five cones to the koyen, get the hule for the firstborn. Once he's a month old, a lot of people in England I was told they do the pidin event together with the bris because the bris are very machmir on the on the new on the the yellow babies being yellow. So many times the bris is postponed. I was recently pidin event somebody from England in Israel, and the pidin event was before the bris. The baby was an oral, and he had pidin event, and he can do it. So pidin event is given to the koyen, and it's also an So by the way. The matonas and Pidyan Ben are secular matonas, which means the koyan doesn't have to be in a holy state of mind, meaning tohor. He can be tome while he's eating the matonas, let's say. And everybody can eat it, and he can also share it with the Israelim. That's why we can eat the Zorlach and Bekeva, we cannot eat truma. Truma is one of the holy matonas. You cannot eat it if you're a Israel. Zorlach and Bekeva, I'm allowed to eat the animal's tongue, which I like very much, because it's not, doesn't have dusha. It's like a secular monetary gift you give to the Koyan. No time for questions now, I'm sorry. When we finish, you can ask your questions. Upidian Peter Chamo. Yeah, the first, the Peter Chamo, the Chamo, the first donkey was born from the female donkey. He is, has Kedusha. And what do you do with it? You have to swap, switch the Kedusha for a set. Yeah, with a, with a sheep. And the sheep you give the Koyan. Where do you do that? They did it recently in America. I'm not joking now. It's a clip. They did in America, Pidin Petah Hamor, the Rambam holds, it applies in Chutzlar, it's also the Pidin Petah Hamor. Even nowadays, I don't know if nowadays it's the right, so it could very well be. If you don't do that, if you don't actually switch the Kedusha and give the set to the coin, you behead the Hamor. You made the coin lose, you're going to lose yourself. The Sde Achuza, Sde Achuza, we discussed briefly recently, Sde Achuza only applies in Eretz Of course, what's Sde Achuza? Sde Achuza is. If somebody inherited the field from his father and forefathers, and he consecrated, I like this word, yeah, it was Makdish, the Soda to Beis Mikdash. What does Beis Mikdash do with the field? Not much. Only can do with it in order to use it is sell it. They sold it to Mr. Who? To Mr. Israel. Now, Mr. Israel, he bought the field, and the money is in the hands of Beis Mikdash. That's nice. They're going to repaint the entire place with the money from that field. Now, the field in Yoivel, what happens in the Yoivel? In the goes back to who? Not to the temple and not to Beis Hamikdash either. Neither the temple, not to Beis Hamikdash. Where does it go to? We are now talking, my friend, about 24 Matnois Kehuna. It Okay, I'm sorry for that glitch in the middle. That's Zoom and not me. Again, this, that, you're close. It doesn't go to the base of Mikdash pocket. That field goes to the Koyhanim who happened to serve during that Mishmar. The Mishmar when the Yovel begins, yeah? Those Koyhanim of that shift, of that family, they're the ones who are going to be the lucky ones to share the field. The, the, the field. They'll be the owners of the field. And that, of course, only applies in Eretz Israel. Why? Because the Achuza is a sode which was inherited from the times of Yoshua. Two more and we finish. The Sde Charomim. Sde Charomim, what's Sde Charomim? Yeah, it's also in Parshas Koyrach. Sde Charomim, a person who says, my sode is Cherem. Doesn't mean Cherem is excommunicated. Cherem means that uh, it belongs to the Koyanim. It's a form of Hekdesh. My field is Cherem, even in Chutzlar, it says Rambam. 
my field in Argentina is what is Cherem, it goes to the Kohanim. What do they do with it? Use it. It's their own. It's theirs. The Gezel Last but not least, Mr. Gezel our good friend Gezel Aguer. What Gezel Aguer? Gezel Aguer is if a person stole from a girl. Why girl? No other people. Because girl is the only person in the Jewish nation that has no heirs. He has no Yorshim. And therefore, once the girl died, and what did they do to him before he died? I stole. And then I swore, le shekel, I lied to his face, swearing that it's not by me. And I admitted, now who does, who is now, and he died. Who's the owner of the business, of the money that I owe him, choymesh? I owe him the principal plus the choymesh. Really, it should have been me. Because if it's in my pocket, I inherited the gear. Because there's nobody else. However, it goes to the koyhanim of that mishmar. And the Koyanim get the Keren, the Choymesh, which Baruch asked about before is your answer. He gets the extra Choymesh, which is really a quarter, not a fifth. And also the Osham, that's besides the point. Why am I so excited about Gezel Agel? Gezel Agel is a huge question. Why is it mentioned with things that are brought all over at Israel? And the Ramam says even in Chutz Laaretz. Tosas asks a tremendous question. Tosas asks, we just said before, that Gezel Agel really should is considered to be like a carbon, right? Even the money, the Osham has a status of carbon. If it has a status of carbon, how can you bring it outside Beis Amikdash? You should bring the money, just like you cannot bring the money by night, only by day, and you can't bring it in installments, like you can't bring a carbon in installments, so too that carbon, that money, which is like a carbon, how can you bring it outside? This doesn't answer. But Lamai said the Gezel again can be brought back to a coin wherever he is, and we're going to see it later on. You meet a coin during his Mishmar time, but the coin he, as my teenage daughter calls it, ditch. She says, some girls, the ditch class, not she, yeah? To ditch class, as to run away from the class, yeah? To just not be there. So he ditched his Mishmar. Oh, I caught the coin, supposed to be in Mishmar in line, and he's enjoying his coffee in a coffee shop in Haifa. Oh, but Lamaisa can give him Gezel again. If it's his Mishmar, I kidding? Okay, he's not drinking coffee. He had a surgery for his daughter. Okay, we'll get down the kaf's chus. The mice the coin is outside the mishmar, anywhere in Israel, anywhere in the world. I caught him in the separate beach in Cyprus, and what? And he's there. I can give him the gazel again, even there, which is the halacha. Tarsis is wondering why, because the mice the gazel again, if it's like a korban, should only be brought in Beis Hamikdash. And Tarsis remains with a question which I have no answer to. By the way, we, it's, we have two more lines, which we're going to see tomorrow. Everyone's welcome to log on to yourshear.com, www.yourshear.com, and watch the entire Bavakama, almost. Yeah, we're about to finish Bavakama. And thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.